Have you ever wondered what chocolates have in common with raspberry pies? The answer is that I'm going to use them both to explain how a new type of computer works. A quantum computer can help us solve problems that the world's best normal computers can't solve, even if they were running for the age of the universe. I've been doing a summer internship with a company called Rivaling, which builds software to control quantum computers. Hello, I'm Maria, and today I want to give you a tour of my quantum computing lab. What I've got here is a simulation of a quantum computing lab that I built using DeltaFlow, which is an operating system for quantum computers made by Rivaling. Now, I'm going to start the demonstration that I'm going to show you running and then explain how it all works. So, what we have here is two Raspberry Pis and a Adafruit feather. So I'll explain what each thing does and how our simulation is working. Here we have our lab computer, which is powered by a Raspberry Pi 4, and that's where we put in the things we want to test in our experiment, and that's where we're going to see the results come out as well. Then we've got our lab equipment. So here our equipment is this Adafruit Featherboard, which is basically a board that can do one specific thing lots of times. So what our equipment is going to do is to control our quantum hardware. Now our quantum hardware is a simulation running on a Raspberry Pi that pretends to be an actual quantum hardware in a quantum computing lab. So we're using Qiskit, which is a quantum simulator made by IBM that you can install on a Raspberry Pi. Now, what we're actually doing is controlling qubits. So normal computers use bits, which can be a zero or a one, Quantum computers use qubits, which I like to explain using a sphere. Now, at the top of the sphere, a qubit is a zero. At the bottom of the sphere, a qubit is a one. But a qubit can also be at any other point on the sphere, which is a combination of both zero and one at the same time. And when we measure this qubit, we've got some probability of measuring a zero and some probability of measuring a one. So what we're doing in this experiment is putting the qubit into lots of different states on this sphere and then measuring it lots of times to see what the probability is of getting a 1. Now, in an actual quantum computing lab, what we'll find is that this equipment and the qubit can be lots of different things. For example, the qubit could be an atom and the equipment could be lasers controlling that atom. So now the simulation is finished running and here on the Raspberry Pi you can see the graph of probability of getting a 1 against where we put the qubit on this sphere. So it's, close, it's 0 when the qubit was in the 0 state and the probability of getting a 1 is 1 when the qubit is in a 1 state but if we're in between then it's also somewhere in the middle. So, we use DeltaFlow to build this quantum computer simulation because it makes it a lot easier to control all the different parts of a quantum computer. And if you just have one qubit, maybe it doesn't matter too much if you have to think very carefully about how you're going to make sure you can control it. But for really useful quantum computers, we don't just want one qubit. We want loads of qubits. And if we're going to control loads of qubits, then we need to need an operating system like DeltaFlow, which can control all these different parts of a quantum computer automatically. So, I encourage you to find out more about qubits, quantum computing, and DeltaFlow. Thanks. Once we're able to control and measure lots of qubits, we can use these to simulate molecules. This will help us discover new medicines much faster. Look out for educational materials from Rivoli, which will explain how you can build your very own Raspberry Pi quantum computing lab.